from the moment the Lancaster bomber went into service in 1942. It was marked as a special aircraft. Capable of carrying the heaviest of bomb loads, the Lank was the workhorse of RAF Bomber Command in Europe right up until the surrender of Germany in May 1945. But no aircraft lasts forever, especially in the accelerated Darwinist environment of warfare, and so as early as 1943, specifications were being issued for a replacement. What was wanted was an aircraft with better defensive firepower, greater bomb load, and higher speed. It was also apparent that with the Allies committed to defeating Germany first and then Japan, the new bomber would likely be coming into service at a point where attention would be switching to the Pacific. It therefore needed to be able to carry a worthwhile bomb load over great distances to contribute to the bombing effort before the invasion of Japan. And so Avro did the logical thing. They built an even better Lancaster. Actually, they built two. These were originally designated as the Lancasters Mark IV and Mark V, but were soon given the new names of Lincoln Mark I and Mark II respectively. The Lincoln was a considerable improvement on the Lancaster. The aircraft had stronger, longer span wings, as well as an enlarged fuselage. This accommodated greater fuel and bomb loads of up to £14,000, or, with modifications, the ability to carry one of the huge £22,000 Grand Slam bombs. Combined with late model Merlin engines that produced more than a third greater power than those on the Lancaster, the Lincoln had top and cruise speeds about 10% faster than the Lank. It also had a greater ceiling, 35,000 feet against the Lancaster's 24,500 feet. Range was the real advantage though. With a reduced 7,000 pound bomb load and auxiliary fuel tanks, the Lancaster had a range of 2,680 miles. The Lincoln could make 2,800 miles with its full 14,000 pound bomb load. With a 3,000 pound bomb load, it could make 4,450 miles. Defensive armament was also improved. Instead of the eight 303 machine guns in the Lancaster, the Lincolns adopted the more powerful Browning M2 50 caliber heavy machine gun in twin nose and tail turrets, and twin 20mm cannon in the dorsal turret. Some aircraft also had a single M2 in a ventral position to protect the aircraft's belly. Because it was basically an improved Lancaster, the Lincoln was quick to develop. The first flight occurred on June 9th, 1944, and the first production aircraft was completed in February 1945. By that point, Plans were well afoot for shifting the war to the Pacific, and the Lincolns were intended to form the backbone of Tiger Force, the Commonwealth Heavy Bomber Force. This would operate from Okinawa and support the US AAF's bombing campaign against mainland Japan. Because it was expected that such an effort would require a substantial investment in new aircraft, production lines were also set up in Canada and Australia to build the Lincoln. The first squadrons became operational with the Lincoln in August 1945, just a few days before the atomic bombing of Japan. The subsequent surrender meant that plans were scaled back as militaries demobilised. However, though the RAF had vast numbers of aircraft in inventory, it was recognised that the older designs could be disposed of. Instead, the RAF could concentrate its heavy bomber force around the Lincoln as the most modern British type available. As a result, the Lincoln was built in fairly large numbers, with almost 600 equipping 29 squadrons in the immediate post-war period. And it was here that it rapidly became apparent that the Avro Lincoln was obsolescent. In comparison to its closest equivalents, the American B-29 and Russian Tu-4, it was slow, poorly armed, and carried a smaller bomb load over a shorter distance. As the Lincoln was effectively the final evolution of the Avro Manchester, a medium bomber whose origins date back to 1936, perhaps this shouldn't be surprising. But it did leave RAF Bomber Command with a rather glaring gap in capability that was only partially resolved by the loaning of American B-29s to the British in 1950. However, Though the Lincoln was very much an aircraft from a bygone era, it did still find some uses. 
In the 1950s, the RAF used Lincolns against the Mau Mau uprising in Kenya. This was followed up by their use against communist insurgents in the jungles of Malaya. Here, the RAF were joined by Australian-built Lincolns of the RAAF. Though Canada only built a total of one Lincoln and rapidly decided it didn't need the aircraft, Australia, with less concerns with enemy fighters and needing long-range bomber and patrol aircraft, used 73 Lincolns of various models. The Malayan emergency saw the Lincolns give their main service, and over a seven and a half year deployment, the aircraft flew more than 3,000 sorties and dropped over a half a million pounds of bombs. Lincolns were also used as test beds for various new turboprops under development and served in reconnaissance and signal roles as they were phased out of bomber duties by the mid 1950s being replaced by the thoroughly modern V-bombers. The final examples of the Lincoln were retired with the RAAF in 1961 and with the RAF in 1963. But the old birds carried on in service for a few more years with another user. In 1947, the Argentine Air Force purchased 30 Lincolns and some second-hand Lancasters, providing them with the most formidable bomber fleet in South America at the time. These aircraft saw use against domestic rebels and in several coups on various sides before being retired in 1967. And that was the Avro Lincoln, an aircraft that was pretty much past its sell-by date within a couple of years of it getting into service. And this has raised some questions in forums and amongst those interested in military aviation history. I've seen comments in various places along the lines of why did the British just go with an upgraded Lancaster when the Americans had already raised the bar with the B-29? Why didn't they build an equivalent? Well, putting aside some of the ambitious plans the British did develop for bombers of similar capacity to the B-29, which came to nothing, let's remember that the B-29 program was massively complex and hugely expensive as in about 50% more than the Manhattan Project that developed the nuclear bomb. On top of that, they were much more expensive as individual aircraft. Broadly speaking in purchase costs, a Lancaster cost about a fifth that of a B-29. Even allowing for greater expense involved in producing the Lincoln, you could buy three or maybe four Lincolns for the cost of a B-29. It might be an inferior aircraft, but if it had come to bomb in Japan alongside the US AAF, then the Lincoln would have been able to do the job. It would also have been available in numbers quite quickly as production lines converted from the Lancaster with comparatively little effort in comparison to tooling up for a new aircraft. Plus, air crews would have needed less time for familiarisation. So to be honest, from the point of view of total war and the expectation that the conflict would last into 1946, with an invasion of Japan, the Lincoln makes sense. Unfortunately, this didn't help with RAF Bomber Command's needs as the Cold War developed. They now faced the prospect of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with formidable Soviet aircraft like the MiG-15 if things had turned hot. In this scenario, the Lincoln would have been horribly exposed. And in fact, such an incident did occur with predictable results. And that shall be the subject of my next video.